Wow, that really warms up fast. That's gonna be a great shower. The goal of this video is to get this hot water heater mounted inside this box so we have a portable shower set up for when I go camping. I'm tired of camping for two or three weeks at a time and either smelling really bad or having to pay a bunch to stay at campgrounds so that I can shower. What I'm going to do is link all of the stuff that I've used here in my description and I'll also put a complete list at revereoverland.com forward slash shower because there's a lot of stuff that I have either switched out or had to buy to go with this. Now the shower itself comes with most of what you need. Uh, the one I've got linked comes with a 12 volt pump it comes with a shower although I'm gonna take this red hose off because it's only five feet long uh, it comes with the gas hose and we'll keep that we'll use that and it comes with a few fittings now some of these fittings are a little crappy like this plastic hose fitting we're gonna throw that out uh, this one we're not gonna use we're gonna use something a little different a little more permanent for the box setup and then uh, we'll keep these two little fittings and the rest of the stuff we're gonna replace. The reason we're replacing it is because of this box. Now you could go with a Pelican case that does actually fit all of this in and you don't have to switch out any of the fittings, but the Pelican case is a lot more expensive than this one and it takes up more room too. This one's a little too compact, so what I've had to do is buy elbow fittings that go on each of these at the bottom and I really struggled. So make sure you use my links for those because I ended up, I I spent a lot of money. Actually, it probably would have been cheaper just to buy the Pelican case because I spent so much money on elbow fittings that didn't work down there because they've used some odd sizes there. If you end up picking a different box from me, you do need to make sure that the box you pick is at least seven and a quarter inches deep. Better to be closer to about seven and a half. It needs to be 17 and a half high and about 12 inches wide. And that's interior dimensions, not exterior dimensions. And when you mount this, you're gonna mount it on the lid, not the inside of the box. The reason for that is with this hot water heater, as it's heating up, water a lot of heat comes out of the top the heat rises out here and you don't want that getting collected up here and I think these are pretty tough and pretty heat resistant but it's still it's better to have it uh, more ventilated up here you can if you get a bigger box mount it in the back here you'd have to build a heat shield a uh, a thing that's going to allow it to vent out, not just up into the plastic. When you're mounting this in the lid, you also need to make sure it's as far in as possible. We need the extra space on the edge here because we're gonna mount the pump on the inside of the box. And because this thing's curved, there is only just enough room to mount it right about here. You also wanna mount it as far up as possible. That way we have room for the fittings at the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do is mark the drill holes. There's only two holes to drill to, uh, to support this. So I'm gonna mark it at the bottom and when you're marking these, these little silver sharpies, these things are the best. To mount the shower in the box, I'm using two of these, get into focus, uh, M6 machine screws. And you'll want one about 20 millimeters long. I think you might be able to get away with 15 millimeters, uh, but definitely no less than that. And to go with it, I'm gonna use these Nylock uh, M6 nuts. So what I'm doing now is just drilling a hole through here Helps if I put a battery on. Do you see that? Right, so I'm just gonna drill a hole through here and M6 is about a quarter inch. So just drill a quarter inch hole there. Before I mount this in the box, I am gonna put the elbows on the bottom because that'd be really difficult to put in once it's in the box. For the water, you need to make sure that you get one that's made of the same material. So these are brass fittings at the bottom. So you need to make sure you get a brass elbow to go on it. If you get stainless steel, then you'll end up with some pretty bad corrosion on there. Um, the ones I've gone with, these are half inch BSPP fittings and they've got the rubber gasket on the inside there. So I don't need to use Teflon tape for those. So I can just screw both those on. For the gas one, I really struggled to find something that would fit here. So I'll put a link to this one. This is again, it's a half inch BSPP thread in there. Uh, and it goes to half inch BSPT uh, there, but it works with one of the ones they provided. And uh, because this one does not have a rubber gasket, I'm gonna use Teflon tape on here. Uh, and for gas, you need to make sure that you're using yellow Teflon tape.
This one's gonna be a little bit of a struggle. But when you apply this Teflon tape, I'm probably gonna have to turn this around so you can't see it. You wanna make sure you're going clockwise, so the same way that you would be screwing this on, otherwise it will bunch up when you put it on. And you wanna kinda of start up the top, wrap it around multiple times, and it helps if you leave a little bit of thread open at the bottom there. And once you're done, you can just snap it off. Now, unfortunately, this does block the battery door a little bit. I can still just get it open with the fitting as it uh, is on here. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the batteries in now. These take D batteries, and apparently they last a really long time. Uh, so it should not be a problem leaving them in there for a while. Uh, the reason I'm going to put these in now is because I have another fitting that's going to go on the end. Let's tighten that up. Uh, I have another fitting that's going to go on the end here, and this is one of the fittings that the heater itself came with. The heater came with it on the bottom here, so I had to remove it before uh, putting this on. And it isn't the same kind of metal, so you do run the risk of some corrosion, but this is gas going through here rather than water, so it shouldn't be so bad. And then this one again is another, uh, it's got a, another rubber gasket in there, so I shouldn't need to put a Teflon coating on here. I should just be able to screw this on and tighten it up. And then this is what the gas hose connects to on here. It's what's provided. Actually, with a little bit of extra effort using the wrench on the elbow here, I was able to bend it forward so it doesn't get in the way anymore. Now open that up and replace the batteries when I need to. All right, so now I'm ready to mount. I'm put this in here and we'll hook up all of the hoses later. Put that in there. The reason I'm gonna put this in first before hooking up all the hoses is because I need to know how long to make the hoses. Um, this one's the water inlet and I'm gonna have the pump mounted over inside here uh, and I mean I could guess but uh, I want to I want to know for sure how long to make it so I'm gonna put the M6 through from the outside which does mean it's gonna be a little more difficult but I think it'll look tidier if I can't get it working then I'll switch it around because there is pretty much no room to work with down here I don't think I can even get this on it no I can't Let's tighten it a little bit. I will tighten it more after I put the bottom one in. All right, there, it is mounted. Next thing to sort out is gonna be the 12 volt pump. This just comes with a couple of bare wires and you can hook this up any way you want. I'm personally going to uh, solder it to an SAE adapter and that's gonna plug into my 12 volt adapter that you've got here. Uh, you can get these with a nice recessed plug uh, to put onto the outside of the box. That way I'd plug this into the outside of the box, but I decided I'm just gonna keep everything inside the box. So I'll just coil this all up and shove it in the box when I close it up. So this is it. I do wish I had some more shrink wrap, some wider shrink wrap that I could put all the way along here just to tidy it up a little bit. So maybe later I'll wrap it in some electrical tape just to tidy it up. Before I mount the pump in the box, I am gonna attach the hose to it. Uh, now this hose right now is 10 feet long. I don't intend on keeping it that long, but I'm not sure exactly how long I'm gonna have it just yet. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attach it here just so I can see how the pump will sit in the box and how close to the edge I can have the pump. And then I will cut this hose when I'm ready. And I have uh, an extra quick disconnect for a garden hose that I'm going to attach to this so that I can extend it if I need to. Right now, 
the plan is just to have this sitting on the rear bumper that I've got and I will uh, just drop the hose into the fuel carrier or well, the water carrier that I've got on the rear bumper so it doesn't need to be particularly long. So when I place this in this box, I want it as far over to the left, or sorry, my left, your right side as possible, uh, because it doesn't fit particularly well right in the center here because of the curve of this. Um, but obviously that's why I put this hose on so I can see just how close to the edge I can get it. And I am struggling there to push it much closer than that. Uh, one thing you can do is warm this pipe up a little bit, or sorry, warm the hose up a little bit and it'll make it easier to bend, but you don't want a too sharp of a bend because it will kink it. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right there. And uh, I put it up at the top as well because this hose, sorry, not this hose, this side is going to connect to the water input there. I want to give it room to kind of kink up at the bottom here when I shut the box. Spin it around so you can see better. Um, so to attach the water pump, I am gonna use the same M6 screws, machine screws that I used earlier. These are not ideal, they're a little thick, and uh, you'll see that the, the holes on the bottom here, I don't know if you can see that too well, the holes on the bottom here are actually smaller than the size of the M6, but because this is rubber, I can force this through. If you're ordering a whole bunch of new stuff or if you end up going out to get more stuff, then I recommend getting something a little smaller. Um, but with the M6, I'm just gonna drill the quarter inch holes again. First one is all the way on. It's sticking out there, so I will just thread that. I'm gonna use a washer on the inside here. I'll leave that like that for now. So I get the other ones in. All right, so that's attached. It is a little bit wonky on there. Don't judge me on that. And also I ran out of the M6 nylock nuts. So I'm missing two. Don't judge for that either. I'll pick some of those up soon. It is actually, they're held in pretty good just because the M6 is, M6 is slightly too large for the uh, rubber feet on there. Um, so when it comes to cutting this, like I said, you want this as close to the water as possible. And I'm probably gonna have this mounted, uh, or at least when I'm using this, mount this up by my rear bumper where I have my water carriers. So I'd need just enough for this to reach down into the water, uh, which would probably be about here. Uh, and obviously this is going to the bottom of the tank. You don't want it just going to the top of the tank, otherwise you won't have a very long shower. Um, I'd also like for it to be able to reach if I have it come out the top and have this uh, sat next to the tank and if the tank's sitting on the ground. And again, about here is probably plenty long enough. It may even be a little too long, but I'd rather have a little extra because you can always just coil it deeper into the water tank. You can't put it further if it's too short. So I'm just gonna cut right here. Uh, and of course, by putting it deeper in a water tank, it is the pump is still just as close to the water as if you had a shorter hose that was in the water tank. There, I really struggled with that one. And like I said, I'm gonna use, I can get some extra hose to use as an extension. I'm gonna use some of this to go from the pump to the water input. And now I've got another one of these that I'll use for the shower itself. So this is, that's just excess right now. That's what will go to the water tank. Now I need to see how long I need it to go from here to the pump. And I think what I'm gonna do is start up hooking it to the pump. So I'm gonna use another one of my hose clamps. So now that's on there, I can cut this just long enough to reach the bob here on the water input. So I'm gonna cut it right there. Then I'm gonna stick another hose clamp on the end. Like that, and feed this onto the water input barb. I 
almost forgot, I actually have a filter that I need to put on this hose. So I'm gonna to have to cut it kind of close. This is the filter specifically for this. I may have to cut it inside the box here because I want it nice and close to the pump. So it's all self-contained in there. And I need another hose clamp for the filter. Another two hose clamps for the filter. One on that side. And then the filter, the water goes through this way. It's got a little arrow on it, so it shows you which way the water goes through the filter. Makes it nice and easy. All right, so the next stage is gonna to be to prepare the quick disconnect that I'm gonna put on here. So I'm gonna have a short length of hose, and then I'm gonna use one of these uh, garden hose quick disconnects to connect the shower head. Yeah, I'll go that much. And I can always change this out later if I wanna add more. The hose is really cheap. So to connect to the hose, I'm using this. This is a little 5 8 barb on this end. Get it to focus. 5 8 barb on here that goes in the hose. And then it's threaded. This is normal garden hose size. And obviously that's gonna fit nicely onto the quick disconnect there. And then inside this, it has a little rubber gasket. So I do not need to use any of the uh, Teflon. I'm just gonna push this onto the 5 8 barb down there and tighten up the hose clamp. All right, so this is the shower side of things done. So I've got cold water comes in using this hose. This is gonna go into the jerry cans that I have on the bumper at the back. Uh, I can extend it if I need to, so I could use another set of these and add more quick disconnects, so I've got a spare one here. I'm actually gonna use this one later. Um, so that's optional if I find I need it. I've got the filter, the water filter, uh, and then the hose comes through to the fuel pump, 12 volt fuel pump. Um, I have this and then the 12 volt adapter down here. And I could plug this into the vehicle or I'm actually gonna end up probably using the Jackery instead. I've got a Jackery 500 that will power it nicely. Um, so cold water goes in the bottom here, goes through, gets heated. Hot water comes out here, and we'll talk about the shower head in a minute. The only other thing is this is where the, uh, the gas plugs in. And we've already got the pipe for that that came with the whole kit. So I can shut this and hopefully everything fits nicely. Yeah, that's it. So there's the portable shower. Now let's do the shower head. So this is the shower head and hose that comes with the shower setup. And the shower head itself is okay. This could be a little nicer, but the great thing about this is it's got the on off switch, which when you combine that with the pump that it comes with with the diaphragm, it means you're only pumping water as and when you need it. You're not wasting water, you're not wasting gas. Uh, but the, the real thing I really don't like about this is the hose that it comes with and of course the plastic fittings on the hose. The hose is only five feet long and that's just not long enough. I wanna be able to set my shower tent up away from the vehicle. I don't wanna have a bunch of water sitting where I'm gonna be walking around the vehicle because it's gonna get muddy, uh, especially if I'm out somewhere like the desert. So I wanna be able to set up a, a significant distance away. And there's two ways I can do that. First of all, I can set up my shower box on my rear bumper and then have a long hose going to the shower tent, or I can take the shower box off and set it on the ground and have the, the hose going up to the top of the shower tent. Either way, this five foot hose that this comes with is just not long enough. So I'm gonna be switching this out with a 10 foot hose that I have here. And I'm gonna use the same kind of setting, uh, same fittings as I did for the quick disconnect uh, on the, the shower itself. Um, so I'm using two of these, uh, one on either end, and they're gonna screw into these quick disconnects here. All 
All right, so that's the hose prepared. And then the very last thing to do is just sort out the head and just unscrew the hose that came with. We're gonna use one of the fittings that came with the shower itself. Is this one. And all I'm gonna do is I screw that onto the bottom of the shower. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use some Teflon tape with this because it does not have any kind of seal in it. This will be a lot easier than the last set that I used. Uh, and the shower actually comes with this stuff too, so you don't need to buy any of that. And I'm gonna make sure I wrap this around clockwise with the thread facing me. And then the other end of the quick disconnect fits on there nicely. I want to be able to quickly disconnect the shower head because it's going to be one of the bulkiest parts of this whole setup. So I want to be able to disconnect it from this, which is also very bulky. That way I can just lay it all inside the box. It also allows the shower head to rotate freely. So when you're showering, it's nice to be able to do that. So it's not stuck in one direction. All right, so this is it, the finished product. And everything is in here right now. Everything does fit in here, but it's definitely a struggle. And honestly, when I end up using this, I probably won't store everything in here, uh, but I'll open it up and let you see. I've got the heaters up here. And then in the bottom, I do have everything coiled up. You see it's leaking a little bit. I did just go test it out. Uh, everything's coiled up down there. Um, but I did struggle to shut it a little bit. So I've got a shower head, gas hoses in here, got uh, the shower hose and the power. Everything in there, barely. But I'll take that out for now. There was a couple more things I was gonna show you, so I'll shut this up. Uh, first of all, I forgot to show you this at the start. Uh, when you get the heater, it comes with this little bracket on the top and just, it, really simply unscrews. I'm actually gonna plan, I plan on repurposing this. Um, I think I'm gonna put it on, uh, I don't remember if this is the top or the bottom, but I'm gonna put it on the top, um, just screw it in like that. That way I have a carry handle and I can use this to hang it up um, on the rear bumper. Uh, next thing I was gonna show you is this. This is the Jackery 500 and this is how it's powering it. So I've got the uh, 12 volt outlet here and it uses about 23 watts. The pump uses 23 watts when it's running. So the Jackery 500 will run this whole shower system for a little over 22 hours. So a ton of time on there. If you wanna get this, I do have a 5% off coupon code and I'll put that in the description. Uh, next thing was the gas. Now I don't wanna carry around a full 20 pound tank of gas with me or propane, sorry. So I've got this. Uh, this is a little five pound tank and this is actually really good value. Usually the smaller tanks for some reason end up costing more than the large tanks. So I've got this, this is refillable. I just need to go get it filled up. And to hold that, I have bought this little mount for it. Uh, it's a great little bracket and this will go on the rear bumper as well. And unfortunately this was not particularly cheap, kind of expensive, but I'll put a link to this in the description as well. Anyway, uh, let's go outside and we'll hook everything up and I can show you it working. So setup was really easy when I came out here. Everything was back in the box. All I had to do was open it up. I took all of the hoses out. I just had to plug in the gas, plug in the shower hose, plug in the shower head, and then drop the input hose into this jerry can. Now, one thing I found with this jerry can is that hose does not want to stay in the bottom. It's just coiling up in there and I'm not getting a good constant supply of water. Um, so if you're going to pick up a jerry can for the purpose of showering, I actually recommend getting the ones with the little spout that's on the bottom there. That way you can plug this input hose to the bottom. Um, so I'm just going to start it up. All I have to do is turn it on at the jackery and the pump will run a little bit and just pressurize the whole system. And then with the shower head, it's got a little button on it. All I have to do is push it and water starts coming out. Now right now it's cold water. It takes a few seconds to heat up and there it is. It's now hot enough to shower and you have a nice comfortable shower with that. I have noticed obviously if you're going to be showering and you want to conserve water, you are going to turn this on and off quite a lot. If you leave it off for a while, then the water that's in here in the hose itself will cool down. So you will need to run it for a few seconds again. And you'll hear that the shower, the shower unit itself starting up again. So it takes a few seconds to warm up again. What you could do to get over that 
is, especially if you've got one of the jerry cans that I recommended with the output at the bottom, is just hook all of this up to the jerry can itself. So you have the water come out the bottom and then just use this hose to feed it back in the top and you could actually preheat your water. Um, now that will use a little bit of gas, but uh, you at least have a nice consistent hot shower. So if you're interested in building this yourself, make sure you use the links that I've got either in the description or at revereoverland.com forward slash shower. That way you can guarantee you've got all the parts that fit and you don't have to do a bunch of trial and error like I did with all the elbows down there. It'll make your life a lot easier and I get a little bit of commission from Amazon at no extra cost to you, so it helps me out too. Also, if you found the video useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.